National farm organizations raising concerns about the federal government's plan to increase the capital gains tax inclusion rate as well as related tax policy changes announced in the 2024 budget last month. Host of Real Life Radio, Sean Haney, joins us now with the latest. Sean, always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. So why uh, this change, capital gains taxes? It's receiving so much pushback from farm groups. So tell us about this. Yes, great to be with you here this morning. So the it, when the budget was released by Finance Minister Christia Freeland, this was one of the changes that was announced. Now, th there has been rumors of changes to the capital gains tax regime in Canada for a number of years, and I, I guess finally the Liberals have uh, decided to take it up. Uh, the, the push here is to uh, essentially make wealthier Canadians uh, pay more of their fair share, as the government would put that, also talking about how it impacts such a small, small amount of Canadians. There has been a lot of data released that does push, at, push back against that, that assertion. So the, the groups acknowledge the increase to the lifetime capital gains exemption to $1.25 million that was announced in the budget, but they say they're concerned that from a farming perspective, the increase to capital gains inclusion rate from one-half to two-thirds is going to nullify the the increase to the lifetime exemption is going to hurt young farmers' ability to buy farm assets. So that's, that's the bulk of the complaint from uh, the 10 national farm groups. So I understand this week, the House Ag Committee on Ag meeting, there was an exchange with the minister, uh, whether he was aware of these changes. What happened there? Yeah, a lot of people talking about how this really does negatively impact agriculture. You know, when a farmer does decide to sell their land to the kids or a, a, another person interested in, in, in buying the land, it's going to hold the, those assets in, in tighter hands. So this week at the committee, Minister McCauley was asked, you know, were you consulted about these changes? And he replied back in a very interesting answer. He said, did I know what was going to be in the budget before I went to the budget? No, I didn't. And he kind of leaned back, and it seemed to be a bit of a contentious point for him. Uh, MP Warren finally asked him to clarify. So you're saying you weren't aware? And he says, I was not aware. So it was <laughs> of the two-hour meeting that I, I, I watched live, that was definitely the most uh, interesting point of that whole meeting. So a lot of questions I feel like up in the air. Is this? Uh, is there a chance that this change might not happen? Is there a chance to not get it in there? There's talk that uh, well, it hasn't it hasn't come uh, in front of the house from, from a legislative point or viewpoint yet. Uh, there is talk that it's going to be a separate bill, and the liberals are going to really, really try to put the conservatives on the hot seat and, and not just approving the budget as a whole and being like an omnibus bill with this included. They're going to separate that capital gains tax on, on its own. Minister Freeland has been traveling across the country talking to groups. You know, the doctors are against this. Uh, mm -hmm. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business is against it. They're facing a lot of pushback on this, but she has held very, very firm that this is something that Canada really needs to create more fairness in, in the tax system. And uh, the entrepreneur community and business community is definitely pushing back. So I have little doubt the government's looking to change their opinion on it. Wow, interesting stuff as always. Sean, thank you so much for this. Host of Real Ag Radio, Sean Haney. And this Real Ag Radio update is brought to you by Economics. You can go to nutrient-economics.com for the latest crop nutrition research and information. And you want to catch Sean and his entire team. Real Ag Radio, 4.30 p.m. Eastern weekdays on Rural Radio Channel 147. And that is on Sirius XM.